Welcome back to ST Networks. In today's video, we'll be discussing about yet another question on uh, scenario based interview questions part 8. Right. So in this video, our question is you're trying to access a server on site B. Right. And uh, from site A to site B, you have a IPsec tunnel. OK, so you have a tunnel here from site A to site B. OK. So this is a site A, this is site B, right? But you are unable to access it. What would you do in this case? So considering you are at X, you're trying to access something from Y. Okay. But you are unable to access. So in this case, what would you do? So let's start with the basics. First of all, you'll check physical connectivity be between these two and these two to check, you know, if that is intact. Okay. Then you will basically check, uh, you know, if the tunnel is made between you know two firewalls f1 and f2 if that is in order or not you'll check that then uh, you know you also will verify the important thing uh, regarding the ip address considering the ip address of this is y dot y dot y dot y let's take a real life scenario okay we'll give it some ip address Considering the IP address in this case is 10.1.1.1, and in this case it is 1.1.1.1. Uh, okay, so you'll check, you know, that the server at site P has a valid IP address. Correct, site A has a valid IP address. Check the routing table to ensure, you know, you know if uh, the route is going correctly. So uh, <clears throat> let's now deep dive into the routing part. Considering you have to check the route. So you need to see that for destination 10.1.1.1, the default gateway is a firewall that is F1. Okay. That to firewalls exit interface. Okay. Or you can say that the default gateway would be this one, basically this IP. And your firewall knows where to go. Okay. That. And uh, the other routing table for destination. 1.1.1.1 okay the default gateway is this IP F1 F1 IP okay that is how the packet will travel so this is basic routing table but the again a very basic thing that you will check is the first thing that you will check you will do is a ping correct You'll bring from X to Y. Okay, you'll do a ping. You'll check if it is pinging or not. Okay. Then uh, either way, if it's pinging, then you know it's reachable. Okay, then you don't need to do a trace route or anything. Then it's reachable. If it's, it does not ping, you'll do a trace route to check if where exactly is the packet landing. Correct. If it is failing at F1 or it is it failing at F2. Right. Either way, you'll check the ACLs on both the places. Correct. And then... Uh, Right, but if it fails at F1, you need to check about the tunnel status. You need to check what the tunnel status is. Like if, uh, you know, uh, if the tunnel is established on both, so you log into F1 and then you check the, you know, Isaac camp or IK is established or not. Like uh, you will use commands like show crypto SA or you look show crypto Isaac camp SA. Okay, or mostly people now use UIs. So you'll use a UI to basically check if you know the tunnel status is up or not. Where is it failing? Correct, either phase one or phase two, whichever is causing an issue. <clears throat> so you'll check that. And uh, other than that, you will also check NAT issues. This is again very important. You'll check if it is going here, but then it's leaving the tunnel also, but it's not reaching. Correct. Sometimes it will just fail right here. Then you have to dog log into the firewall. Correct. Check the logs. You also need to check the NAT request. That you will you will check by Wireshark. You'll see those errors when uh, you can see, see in the logs also. In the logs itself, it will give you an error uh, regarding NAT that uh, tunnel is not established because of NAT issues. Okay. Then one very basic important thing here is the if you are using NAT, correct, 
and you're using ACLs. You definitely use ACLs. If you both of you are using that, correct? This will change, correct? So society would change. And at F2, you need to configure ACL accordingly to your tunnel IP or your uh, source IP, so that it will let you access Y regarding to your source IP. Correct. So you'll create ACLs like for source IP. This is source IP. This is destination IP. For this port, I will allow, allow access to Y. Correct. But sometimes if you are using NATing, the source IP may differ. So you need to keep that in mind. Most of these issues will be around that itself. Correct. So that is another point. Then what can you do? Then you can check. If you are actually deep diving into it, you can also check MTU issues. This is a very, again, very important. Correct. Because our IPsec packets will be data. Okay. After data, you have uh, TCP protocol, ESP or AH. For example, IP. Okay. Because this will be your actual MTU because of IPsec overhead packets, right? Then, uh, in some cases, if you're using tunnel mode, what happens is you have an external uh, additional IP header. Because of that, you know, the MTU size may increase. And if my MTU increases, sometimes it will cause connectivity problems because that again depends on interfaces correct if this interface does not allow a packet that big it will get dropped or uh, not regards to y as well right if this interface this interface if it does not allow packet uh, you know with respect to uh, its mtu not more than 1500 the packet may get dropped so these are some of the reasons but uh, for a detailed troubleshooting what i would suggest is i'll just write it down here I suggest a session of steps, right? I call it session of steps because I need you to follow them. So yeah, let's remove all this. Okay. What I follow and helps me with every issue that I get, correct? Is in an order. The first thing is basic troubleshooting, basic connectivity. Okay. The second one would be IPsec tunnel. Status. Check the status first. Third one is firewall rules. Very important. Fourth one is routing. Just log into the device, check the routing table, check the routing table, check the routing table, check the routing table. Okay. Fifth one is security policies, ACLs. Okay. Then you can say sixth one that you can do. Okay. Is MTU. Seventh one, packet capture. Packet capture and logs. If you do this in this particular format, in this particular series of events, 99% uh, of the times you'll solve it at uh, you know third or fourth step itself, fifth maximum fifth step itself. I usually, in very very less cases, go down to the second seventh one. But uh, you know, sometimes while looking at the issue itself, you understand that because if it's an intermittent issue, sometimes you're able to access, sometimes you're able to not. So everything will be same. Basic connectivity is fine. Internet connectivity, uh, you know, IP sector is fine. Rules and everything is same. Nothing is tampered with. Then I move on to the logs directly to check if something else is causing the issue. And then sometimes, you know, some cable or something is fluctuating. That's different. But this is your basic, basic troubleshooting of, uh, you know, connecting from site A to site B. Another thing that you need to keep in mind is sometimes you do a ping, then you do a trace route. Okay, for tra trace out, you need to understand that trace out can work on both ICMP and sometimes a reply might come on UDP. So that is it might be blocked. So always keep that in mind. Don't really get down to, uh, you know, uh, things like, uh, you know, ping is not reachable, this and that. Because on firewall itself, sometimes there's a feature for blocking ping, ping and trace route and, uh, you know, I, uh, basically ping and UDP and trace out both. Like, all three protocols you can block. 
so basically this is how i would like you to troubleshoot and if there's any issues concerns doubts please feel free to reach out in the comment section and i'll definitely reach back to you i hope this was helpful thank you